There are some things in life you cannot explain. Like the Stonehenge, the Bermuda Triangle, or why human beings yawn. And why do human beings keep pets? Caring for your children makes sense. They may provide for you in the future. From an evolutionary point of view, caring for your human family also makes sense. They share our genes. So it is a way to make sure our genes continue. But why care for a random dog, cat or any random animal? Yet millions of people around the world, across different cultures, keep pets and consider them family. We lost Puko once when she was um, about three years old. Um, I was I was like a mad person, completely distraught, and um, we sort of drove and looked for her everywhere. It was around Losa time, so we didn't know that she had been stolen uh, until the end of the day because everyone was busy cooking and you know how losses are and she was out with uh, the other stray dogs that we had adopted and she was playing with them. Uh, at the end of the day we looked and called for her but she never came home and um, it may sound strange to you but I even consulted a psychic. <laughs> um, of course I was very desperate and I never really believed in psychics before. I'd lost all, you know, hope. Mm -hmm. So I went to a local chief, and mm -hmm. he said that Puku had gone up, uh, up direction, okay. and um, it was quite, quite. He was quite accurate, no. and I never believed in tips before, <laughs> but uh, at that time, uh, the the answer that he mm -hmm. gave me really helped because he said she'd been taken uphill, mm -hmm. and there were no paw prints, uh, mm -hmm. so basically she was taken in a car, mm -hmm. and he said go uphill, like keep asking, keep trying, go uphill, and then. Um, uh, a day or two later, me and my friend, we asked around and then uh, we sort of found out that she was tied uh, in front of someone's house. Uh, I wouldn't go into detail okay. about that, mm -hmm. um, but then uh, there was this person who, who, who was very honest and mm -hmm. she, she told me that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I remember this dog and she was outside um, this person's house mm -hmm. during Loser. Mm -hmm. So the timing fit, mm -hmm. uh, everything fit. Mm -hmm. So. Um, before I knew it, I was just knocking on the front door of that house, uh -huh. and yeah, they they sort of had um, you know mm -hmm. uh, to just come out and tell us that yeah, they took her. When I asked them um, why they took her, uh, he just casually said that um, he stopped his car and opened his door, uh, and she just jumped in. Uh, told this person. Um, what if what, your child was walking by the side of the road and I'd opened the door and uh, asked him or her to come in? Mm. How would you feel? And that's mm. exactly how I felt mm. when she was gone. That was a really heartbreaking moment for me, but also something that made me realize the love that I have for her and what my life would be like if she wasn't in it. As much as she's an outdoor uh, mm. dog, she's, she's an indoor dog. She loves her bed and her sofa, which is <laughs> chewed um, half of it uh -huh. and yeah uh, so I think they, they tied her outside their house mm. thinking that she's a big dog so yes. she's an outdoor dog but I think that frightened her the most 
um, she wouldn't leave my side of the bed after she came back. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and I never put a collar around her neck mm. because uh, they're called uh, Puku's breed is Labernard because mm. she's a mix of a Labrador and a Saint Bernard, okay. and a lot of their growth stems from their neck. Ah, okay. So I, I, I never put a leash around her neck. I mm. always wear the the jacket leash. Mm -hmm. Um, I, but at that time when she was stolen, they put a, a very big tight leash around her neck so I could still see the marks. Mm. Um, tell us uh, about your paintings, like when you first started painting and how Puku became your favorite muse. Uh, well, I was a part of VAST since it opened. Mm -hmm. I never really took uh, formal classes, but mm -hmm. I've, I've always been around people mm -hmm. in VAST. My best friend is, uh, was running VAST for quite some time. Oh, okay. uh -huh. She'd left recently. Mm -hmm. But somehow the people in my life, mm -hmm. I've always connected to, to artists. Okay. Uh, um, I wouldn't say that, you know, uh, I'm an artist. I never call myself an artist, but I do love painting. I love working with colors. And Until I met Puku, I think most of the things that I was painting were flowers, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I loved painting flowers because of the mix of colors and all. But then when Puku came, um, she was perfect for me. She was, she was my perfect muse. <laughs> and uh, do you think Puku likes being painted? Uh, she's she's quite a good muse. Like uh, you know, she she just likes to lie uh, around. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's her favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. So sh that makes her the perfect, the most comfortable, convenient muse for me. What is it about uh, Puku that you try to capture in your paintings? I love her nose. <laughs> uh, there's 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 nothing more uh, cuter than her button nose, uh, and and of course her colors have changed too. But I, I love that that's her favorite part. Uh, my favorite part of her mm. her face is her button nose. <laughs> Would you say that Puku has been worth it? Uh, all the challenges that you may have, all the okay. shedding, everything. Uh, what do you think? Without hesitation, yes. uh, it's been worth it. Absolutely, and of course I have a. Uh, supportive family. Mm. Uh, you also have to think about, you know, uh, when you live together yes. with your family, you also have to think about their convenience. Yes. And uh, but my my family has. I've always grown up with pets, mm. uh, with dogs. But mm. uh, with Puku, her being my own, me and my husband our own. Uh, uh, we were grateful that our parents were there for her as well mm. because. Uh, it's one thing to have her, but at the same time, you have so many things to do. Like yes. you go to work at nine and throughout the day, it's my mom who cooks and feeds her. Mm. I try to put her on a diet, but my mom thinks she's getting too skinny. So she gets like four or five meals throughout the day. <laughs> so yeah, she's become, and my dad calls her his uh, granddaughter. So oh, really? yeah, because <laughs> we don't have girls in the family. My brother has two boys. So she's the Ajim. Would you uh, uh, change anything about your decision to keep Puku? Oh no, I wouldn't. It's, it's the best decision I ever made. Stop. Good girl. So, so love. Good girl. High five. Ajay. Good girl, yeah. Yeah, good girl. Okay, let's do the thing. Kana do. Kale! Kale! Okay. Kana do. Kale! Kale! Ana do. Good girl. How are you? Love so so. Good girl. High five. Oh, good girl. Push. Push. Oh, good girl. <laughs> Sorry. She <laughs>
Uncle wasn't bought. Mm. Uh, uh, sh she was given to me by my best friend. I was in Finsling when Pupu was born and Pupu was in Pimpu. Mm. So my friend called me and she said, Hey Toki, like, which, which puppy would you want? And mm. I said, anyone's fine. Mm. And uh, uh, then her siblings got taken away by our other friends who are like extreme dog lovers. Mm. And Puku was the one who was, uh, you know, left. <laughs> Sad to say, but at uh, telling you the truth, she was quite the rent of the litter. She was very small mm. uh, compared to her siblings. So okay. immediately I called her Puku because, you know, in, mm. in, in Bhutanese, like, Zonka, you know, we, we call our little babies Puku because mm -hmm. they're very tiny. Mm. Uh, then I got her uh, a month after she was born. Okay. And six months later, she was basically a Puku, as in now I, I kind of joke and say Puku is not because, because, of, because she's a small puppy, but Puku is because she's Puku. As you can, <laughs> as you can She's shedding so she's, much. Yeah, she's the queen of poo. Uh, <laughs> she's not like this, but right now it's like her season, uh, you know, her shedding season, as uh -huh. most uh, dogs per breed shed yes. around this time of the year. Yes. But it's fun because I get to brush her, and uh, mm. like, it's, it's kind of like a bonding moment for both of us. Uh, she likes to be groomed. That's oh, she does? Yeah, she does. She, she's quite fancy that way. <laughs> In so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's why I named her Puku. Okay. Uh, came out for the exact, uh, completely opposite, opposite reason. Opposite <laughs> From She's Poku now, <laughs> very big. So, um, you were telling me how much she, does she weigh? Uh, she weighs uh, about three kilos more than me. <laughs> you know, Poku. I won't say my weight, but she's like around 58. <laughs> It's been hot, it's yeah, a very she, hot day. Yeah, she's very hot. She's been running to the shade. I know. I'm sorry, Puku. Um, I also wanted to ask you, uh, do you remember the day you got her? How was that day? Can you describe it to me? Uh, it, I was very excited. Uh, she was supposed to get to Finsling around one, I still remember, around lunchtime. But mm -hmm. there was sort of like a issue uh, uh, in the journey. Mm -hmm. uh, my f other best friend had, uh, you know, like looked after her for about the month that she was still sort of like uh, with her, had to be with her mom. Okay. So <laughs> she <laughs> she was sent uh, through uh, one of the truck drivers mm. because my oh, best okay. friend's husband owns a grocery shop, mm. and uh, he was sort of coming to Finsling to get some stuff. So uh, they had sent Puku through him, mm. and he was probably one of the most kindest. You know, person I know as far as Puku is concerned, I because he had put her mm. in a box with mm. the blankie and <laughs> fed her mineral water. <laughs> we didn't really have to, but then he he said he drank tap water when he fed her mineral water. So, hey, hey, so Puku, yeah, Puku you're had a, yeah had a really good journey. <laughs> and then you were saying uh, in Funtuling that was the uh, the first year you and your husband and Puku. It felt uh, uh, it was like. Uh, the best moment as a family for you guys at that time. You said it was the best time as a family. Yes, it was. W why do you say that? Because uh, I got we got married very young. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was I was 20, 23. He was twenty uh, no thirty two. He was twenty three. Mm -hmm. At that time, we weren't legally married, but we were just uh, sort of trying to you know live in and mm -hmm. see how everything goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was basically like. Uh, our first experience of an independent life, mm. like by ourselves and also together as a couple. Yes. So you had to make a lot of decisions around yes. the house. I'm sure a lot of new couples and you know people who've been <laughs> together would understand and uh, relate. Mm. Uh, even a spoon has to be you know decided on <laughs> <laughs> and to be discussed. Yes. Uh, so when Puku came into our lives, I think that was she was like the epitome of you know, uh, how a relationship could would go when you share things mm. and when you when you're responsible for another being mm. so so book was special to us because she she defined us as a family mm. um, there was one incident where we were so broke one time <laughs> paying our bills and she <laughs> going shopping and uh, we were uh, very broke uh -huh. uh, that we had to decide is it going to be a box of pizza tonight or Puku's food because <laughs> she loved the treats mm. Yeah. Okay. So we it was quite expensive at that time for us. So we had to decide between pizza or Puku Street. So yeah, obviously, obviously. we went with Puku Street. <laughs> Stay. 
Stay, stay, Bruno, stay. Kuku, on the show, on the show. Kuku, on the show. I'll sit there, show on the show. She knows exactly when she's going for a walk, especially when I take her leash out. And every time she sees me wearing my shoes, she knows, she knows it's time for her to go. Uh, I try to take her out as much as possible, but because I have to go to work, it's, uh, it's, it can't be every day. So yeah, uh, I try to take her maybe at the most four or five times a week. I don't really have to do much with the leash. It's like she takes me for a walk rather than it being the other way around. So she knows every turn and every corner. So she's kind of used to it and it's almost as if she looks forward to it every day. It would last uh, sometimes 30 minutes and sometimes more than an hour. It depends on what we kind of uh, discover on the way. And uh, if she feels like exploring up further up the hill, I let her be, I take her leash out. Uh, she's a pretty big dog, so although she's super friendly, it's um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, a bit uh, sort of scary for her to meet people on the way because people get scared of her, but she's kind of friendly, but I do keep her on the leash when we go for a walk because of her <laughs> size, as you can see. Uh, but then when we get up uh, to the hills, uh, I kind of let her be and let her explore. So yeah, it takes more than, a, than an hour sometimes, <laughs> depending on Puku. <laughs> people ask me a lot about, you know, what we do together. And I would love to say that we do like sports together or we swim, but Puku's just Puku and I'm just me and we're just us, you know, like two uh, souls together. Like we were meant to find each other. I always say that. For me, it's, uh, uh, I, I adopted Puku uh, from a friend, from a very dear friend of mine, and we kind of found each other that way. And Puku, just by being her, gives me sort of like the motivation to think of stuff to do together. It, it may not be uh, glamorous, but it's still uh, very fulfilling for the two of us. This moment is probably 30 minutes away from everyday life for the both of us. Uh, I know there's this, this saying that, you know, your dog spends the rest of its life waiting for you to come home. That's probably what, you know, kind of gets me started for the walk. And um, even today I was kind of very like exhausted and tired from everyday routine. But knowing that Puku is waiting for me and she's looking forward to this uh, half an hour together, um, it kind of gave me the energy that I didn't have. So yeah, I kind of feel like I reserve that little bit of uh, ounce of energy for Puku and for this walk. And then at the end of it, uh, we're both like sort of happy and content 
with, uh, with the day. We kind of accidentally discovered uh, the spot. Uh, we just moved here about uh, probably six years ago. Uh, and then we were trying to explore some places uh, together. We never really considered this as a place for, you know, walking and stuff, but we did see a lot of people coming up and we were actually taking a car ride. And Puku at that time, she was very young. I think uh, she was about um, two years old and she was quite restless in the car. And then she saw trees and people walking by. So we actually took a pit stop before we got to uh, one of our uh, spots that we wanted to go. Um, and then she just wouldn't sort of like go away from the spot. She spent almost exactly how she is right now. Um, so that's when I kind of uh, realized that this would be a, like a really good spot for us to go for a walk. So yeah, ever since then, we've been trying to, you know, come here every half, uh, every day for like half an hour. I think she's kind of, for me, it looks very like, you know, it looks like a scene from a movie. I don't know if that's what, what it looks like to me, but then I think she's just kind of like looking for, you know, other dogs down there at the park and around that area. And then, you know, people just sitting there and she's looking for birds. She loves birds. Yeah. Puku's my baby. <laughs> no matter how big or old she gets, I guess a lot of dog, uh, I wouldn't say dog owners, but I say do parents to dogs and puppies would uh, completely understand and get me when I say that. Um, she she loves me. Uh, uh, I've been away for two years, so I'm trying to make up for that. It's been the hardest time when it comes to, you know, whenever I miss home, I miss Puku a lot. And uh, uh, it's a very special relationship that we have. And uh, it's close to having, you know, a human baby, I would say, because Puku's my baby, my four-legged baby. <laughs> Books! Bookster! Bookster! <laughs> I'm what did he? I think um not just mentally but physically and overall and so much more i think uh, not just with dogs but any any uh, animal you may adopt uh, could help you could go a long way puka has really helped me with the uh, mental health and my mental well-being because like i said i was very tired when i came from work but i saw her face and she saw the leash and she sh she saw me <laughs> putting on my shoes and she was ready so even small things like that and even just their presence uh, makes a lot of difference when it comes to mental health. And I really think that people, you know, uh, mental health is, is a real thing now. It's, it's, it's affecting almost everyone to, in, at any rate. Um, so I think anyone uh, who has the time, who can, you know, make the time, should consider adopting uh, dogs, especially because they really help you with your, your state of mind, your state of happiness. That's what Book has been for me and I hope I am for her too. <laughs> Tupchi, 
You've done now. Sure. You never really have a reason, mm -hmm. at least for me, when you go to adopting a dog. For me, it was uh, love at first sight. You never really plan to have a pup and fall in love with them. It happens when they come into your life. The moment you open the door and they just come running towards you and uh, all of that put together, it's, it's, it kind of gives you uh, a sort of strength. In a way, she is my strength, so mm. she gives, you know, I don't need to look for a reason, but she, she, she is my strength. While there are many research, counter-research and theories on why human beings keep pets, Kazang and Puku seem to have found their own reason. And maybe, just maybe, some things in life are meant to be felt rather than reasoned. If you would like to adopt some, there are places that you can reach for help. If you would like to help by donating food, medicine or even a house for a dog, uh, you can contact the same places. You can also reach out to us at Animals of Bhutan on Instagram and we can coordinate it for you. Doesn't build more, she doesn't build more, say.